What is going on everyone, it's Justin here and today I've got a home tech tour. So we're gonna take a look at like the audio products, some of the things in the kitchen, the office, and just around the house that I use. And I think right now because people are spending time at home and maybe even switching to working from home, it might be a good time to switch up some of the tech and make some changes here and there. So these are products that I've been using as like an essential for at least the last six months. None of the products are sponsored, but some of them were sent to us a while back. But whether it is like the home speaker system, what's in the kitchen, the TV and living room, game console, office. I thought I would just kind of walk through it casually. And if you guys want to check out the full condo tour as well as videos of the kitchen and the living room, I'm going to drop a link down below to everything as well as all the products mentioned in this video. If you guys want to see me do more home videos though, or maybe even a walkthrough of the before and after and what things I changed in the process, let me know and also subscribe to the channel. And let's just go ahead and get started with the first items. So I think the very first thing is a Sonos system. So whether it is a TV or just around the house, I have the Sonos 3 and I think five or six Sonos 1s, stereo pair in the bedroom. I have them all synced together so I can either play just the living room or all of them at the same time. And I usually use Spotify to stream to it. They are definitely expensive and I know there's like a new version of this coming out, but the Play Bar has been around for quite a while and I use it with my TV as well. I know there were some people who were mentioning that I shouldn't have it behind the couch, but because of this pole here, there wasn't really anything else I could go here. So it was either mounting another hole on the wall above the fireplace or trying to put it right here. And so far it has worked perfectly fine in my opinion. So of course in any living room, you've got to have a TV and my TV of choice is the Samsung QLED line. I've used it in both the living room and the bedroom. And the reason why I went with QLED instead of OLED is because I needed a lot of brightness. The sun is actually coming from that side and it's pretty much facing right at the TV. So here it is, it's a 55 inch size. I know we'll get a lot of questions about the sizing. I maybe could have gone with a 65, but I didn't really feel like it was needed because I'm sitting just like about a meter and a half away. And in terms of the fireplace, this is something that I also switched out during the renovation from a larger one that made the TV like pretty much almost at the ceiling. I don't really have much to say about the TV. I think it is a pretty solid option, but I would recommend if you want to save money to just buy like the 2017 or 2018, maybe even the 2019 if they're discontinued or discounted because I feel like the changes are all very minor each year and with like the smart TV capabilities, HDR and everything, I think that even though this is a 2017 model, it is still perfectly fine. So now we're in the kitchen and back when I did my tour a couple months ago, I think I mentioned that I hadn't really used the kitchen at all. I think I used it once in like the six months that it's been done, but I'm very proud to say that now that we're like kind of stuck at home and it's harder to go out and get takeout, it just takes a little bit longer. I decided to start cooking and I plan to do it for at least three to four times a week for the foreseeable future. What I did was I like ordered some meal plans online and all the portions and everything are pre-prepared, but all the stuff still has to be cooked. So I feel like that is like a good starter practice for anyone who just wants to learn how to cook because I personally thought I would never figure it out. So in terms of some of the tech that I picked up for the kitchen, obviously resale value is something that I want to keep in mind. So even though I wasn't using the kitchen that much, I still try to pick things that were kind of above the mid end. That way it is going to last for a long time. I went with the Samsung dishwasher. And one thing that I love about this is that it opens up by itself when it's done. So if you're not home or something, it will let all the steam out and have it dry. In terms of the stove and the uh, range hood, I also went with the Samsung. I'm not sponsored by them. I went and bought all this myself. And what I like about the stove is that it has like these blue LEDs. It's overall pretty powerful, but like I said, I didn't really need anything special. Uh, other than that, I don't really use my actual oven, but I picked this one up uh, from like Canadian Tire. It's just a Lagostina oven. I can cook like potatoes and some vegetables in there. Not too bad. Now that Starbucks is closed, I have started making my own coffee. This espresso one right here is one that I picked up on Black Friday and I'll say the coffee is decent, definitely not the best, but I also just picked up this cup that a lot of you guys have been asking about um, on Amazon has like the double walled glass uh, and I've also spilled coffee all over my desk like yesterday. So all you have to do is uh, pick your pod that you buy online and um, open it up, pop it in, close it up, make sure your water is refilled. So we're going to uh, quickly do that. I'm hoping to start making my own cold brew soon, but I'm just waiting for like the uh, different parts to come and I'm probably gonna do a bit of a video of that as well. So our coffee's good to go, um, looks pretty awesome. And uh, here, you guys can have a taste. 
One piece of tech that I also made sure to upgrade to when the renovation was being done was USB ports into outlets. So a lot of the items still use USB type A, whereas others might use USB type C. So I decided just to go with a outlet that had best of both worlds. It has one USB type C port as well as a USB A. So if I'm like just like cooking and need to charge a phone, go ahead and plug it in. And in terms of price, it's definitely not the cheapest option to go with, but if you look on Amazon, you should be able to find some options that aren't too expensive either. So now moving on into the house, the other piece that I have is the Nest thermostat. And that is kind of what controls the entire place. You can control it from your phone as well. But nothing really much to say about that. This is the cheaper model, I believe, the Thermostat E, and it is all I need. It fits very well and looks flush on the wall, and it just allows me to change the temperature from anywhere in the house. The other piece in the Nest system that I also picked up because it syncs within the same app as a thermostat is the Nest Protect smoke alarm. It is obviously good at its main focus, but I do recommend you wait until it is on sale to pick it up. And I know it also serves as a hallway light as well. So now moving on to the desk setup and the office, and this is where I spend like, I would say, 80 to 90% of the day. I just like to edit videos and just do everything right here. It is like my central hub. And for the past couple months, it's kind of changed here and there. Uh, and I think now is at the point that I'm very happy with it. So if you guys wanna see like a detailed desk setup tour, let me know down in the comment section below. But in terms of like the general tech pieces, I have the 38 inch LG display with the Logitech C920 webcam, which is 1080p and is as hard to find as toilet paper right now. But I had mine from a couple months ago. I don't really use the webcam that much but occasionally I might be like I don't know on a FaceTime call or something like that so it's just nice to have and they also included this like little plastic cover as well um, another piece that I added lately is the Belkin Pro Thunderbolt dock which is connected to the computer and also allows me to like quickly plug like USB type C um, as well as USB 3 and the SD card from our audio and that just makes things so much easier than reaching underneath the desk and I'm um, trying to reach the ports in the back here it just got like a bit of the podcast equipment because I'm going to be launching a podcast soon we're just waiting for this to arrive um, from Amazon and another piece that I really love lately and I think makes like a great decor item and is also a pretty solid keyboard is this one right here from Keychron and um, it is a mechanical keyboard but it just looks so cool I'm just not really used to typing on something like this right now so I'm still trying to kind of ease it into my setup the other piece that I also added recently that I got quite a few questions on in the day in life video is the Philips hue that is behind this monitor so they actually make one that is kind of specialized for monitors where you put it on your iMac or one like this and it has the full RGB range just like any other Philips Hue light and I also have one in the bedroom as well they're definitely a little bit overpriced you can get much cheaper LED bulbs that are also multicolor and Wi-Fi based but I find the Philips system just very reliable so that has been my go-to choice and it looks especially good at night when you're trying to just edit some videos and stay up and just need a bit of energy it just adds a very nice vibe and an otherwise very plain wall the other thing that I also have next to the desk is called a phone soap. I bought this like two to three years ago and I'm definitely not a germaphobe or anything. I probably wash my hands less than I should on a regular basis, uh, but obviously nowadays I'm washing it a bit more. I saw this online, it was like $60 and you just go ahead and put your phone inside and it has UV light that apparently kills all of the germs and stuff that is on your phone because your phone is probably the dirtiest thing that you have. Whether or not that actually does anything, I'm not really sure, but I tried recording it and it would always just stop the video clip on the phone after like two seconds. So I don't really know what that means, uh, but I put my phone in there once a day right now just to make sure that it might be clean. So the next piece of tech here is kind of what drives every single thing in the entire workflow of making videos, and that is the Apple Mac Pro from 2019. It was a lot of money and it still crashes just as much as any other computer. Final Cut still just like crashes out of nowhere and it still has a lot of the problems that any other computer would, no matter the price. But when it does work, it has definitely been one of my favorite purchases. It saved a lot of time. And when we edit in 4K and 6K, I believe that it was a good company investment. But because I didn't want to spend $400 on Apple's wheels, whenever I want to uh, clear it of dust or kind of reconfigure the wires, we got to kind of like, I don't know, slide it out and all that. But that lives under the desk. Definitely not the prettiest setup in terms of how it looked before. But if you told me to pick one piece of tech that I love the most, I would probably have to say it's a Mac Pro and the iPhone. The only other thing you're gonna find on my desk setup is the Logitech MX Master 3 mouse as well as the keyboard that came with the Mac Pro. I did get a few questions as to why I have a silver and black keyboard, but it's just the one that they included with the computer. 
Last but not least is a pixel stand that I use to charge my iPhone and the only complaint to have about it is that because it is vertical, I can't really charge the AirPods properly. Towards the side facing the window, I usually have a desk that I use for filming, so it gets shuffled around, but in this case, because I've been home a lot, I've decided to set it up as a gaming system. I just have a 24 inch Samsung monitor as well as a speaker bar that I bought on Amazon and it works pretty well, gets the job done and I have the PS4 Pro connected to that. This allows me to just like turn around and play a quick game and then get back to work on the main desk. On this side we have Trevor's workstation and this is a iMac Pro, I believe the base model that I bought from Jonathan Morrison who keeps thinking I'm a jerk because I am so cheap when I try to buy his stuff. The one piece of tech that I think is kind of unique though is this buster and punch bulb right here. It just looks really nice on the desk and the bulb itself is actually made out of plastic but it just has like that really cool design and it's very nicely machined. It has that knurled finish at the bottom and if you're looking for like a very unique lamp I definitely recommend it. Towards the hallway, I have a wall set up that has a lot of the charging equipment for the cameras, microphones, and everything that I might need because this master bedroom is my main office. And by having power outlets installed inside the closet, it keeps a lot of the clutter out of the rest of the room. The last thing that I added that I posted on Instagram and I got quite a few questions about is the sound panels that I have on the ceiling. It's not necessarily a piece of tech, but for recording videos, it is crucial to be able to dampen as much sound as possible. Both of these panels are four feet in size. With everything being very technology focused, you might be wondering what my Wi-Fi setup is. And although the place is about 1200 square feet and you don't need like the most advanced system, the one that I've stuck with for the past couple years is the original Google Wi-Fi hub system. The reason why I haven't switched to the new one is because that one does not have an ethernet out. Thankfully, because there are ports in each room, I was able to wire it to decide which was my main area. So in this case, the main router is in the office and the second piece in the mesh system is over in the living room. So as you guys might have noticed by now, the office is very much where all of the home tech lives. And I think nowadays, a lot of people are gonna be transitioning to working from home. So hopefully this video has like a couple tips as to what you should have in your house if you plan to work from home. Um, personally, I've only worked from home in my whole decade on YouTube. So yeah, this is kind of like my setup that I've tried to keep casual, but at the same time have all the things that I need to run some video production stuff and uh, just like the daily operations. So when it comes to the bedroom, I try to keep things very simple. I just don't think there's much that needs to go in here. Um, just a set of speakers, the Sonos on each side that is linked together and is also my alarm clock. And on the media side, the 55 inch Samsung QLED TV is what kind of powers that set up. And I usually have either the PS4 that is from the office or a TV box connected to it in case I wanna watch like Formula One or hockey while laying in bed. As for lighting, I picked that light up from West Elm and inside of it, I have two of the Philips Hue bulbs that are a bit of a weird shape, but they fit within the dome and that is like a nice ambient light to have. But other than that, I don't think there's really much to say about the bedroom because I've just really kept it as simple as possible because you might've noticed the office is just a bit busy. So now into the master bathroom and this is one that I don't really use because I'm living by myself and I use the other side for showering and stuff, but I do have a Dyson hairdryer that is plugged in in here and Obviously by no means do I need a Dyson hair dryer, um, but we were sponsored by Dyson last year and it is actually a really good piece of tech and I think it makes a great gift. And um, my barber just told me to start using it a little bit more and trying to style the hair each morning. Other than that though, in the bathroom, there's a blue LED light for the toilet um, as like a night light. And in the showers, these are a set of sound panels because echo seems to be a big problem in some of our videos. So not knowing where else to really put them, they're living in the shower for now. Another piece of tech that I use on an everyday basis, that is the Dyson V11 vacuum. And I'm using like the Dyson line since like the V8 and it's not because I like to vacuum every single day. If anything, I'm a little bit lazy to do that. But the rug in my living room and in the office is from West Elm. And although it looks very good and I love the way they kind of fit into the room, these rugs shed extremely easily. So if you're thinking about getting a West Elm rug, I would say maybe think again because you will literally find like dust balls all over the house every single day. 
When it comes to home decor, I'm relatively picky and try to keep things very simple. And on my coffee table in the living room, I have a Virgil Abloh book as well as a Tom Ford one, just as some like decor. I don't really read them that much. And around the house, I've also gone with diptyque candles. I think they smell pretty good. I don't really light them that often aside from the one in the kitchen after cooking. They're definitely quite overpriced, but I saw them a few years ago in Vancouver and thought about it for quite a while before finally deciding to pick a few up. As for soap, my choice is Aesop, and I just like the smell of the orange one, For but for like shampoo and all the other stuff, I just grab the spare ones from hotels, and the one I've liked a lot is La Labo. Other than that, all my lights are from West Elm, and I also have a few Buster and Punch lamps that they sent over last year, and I think they're very unique. So when it comes to the bathrooms of the tech side of things, there's not really many things that I need. Um, just the electric toothbrush. This one's from my friend uh, who makes the brush. And in terms of the shaver, it is one from Babilis in the gold color. Other than that, just a couple things here and there, a candle. But if you move on to the shower, I would say one of the best accessories to get is a shower hanger like this. I've had this installed for about three years now, and it just keeps everything very nice and organized and off the floor and just like the general area because a lot of times I'm guessing people have a lot of stuff. And this soap is just stuff that I took from the hotel uh, because it was free. The last piece of tech and left for the end of the video for good reason is a laundry machine. And the one I went with is nothing too crazy. It was just an LG one. I believe it was on sale when I bought it. And although some of the higher models have steam clean, this one does not. And the reason why I went with it is because the condo only has a certain amount of space to fit a washing machine. And this one happened to be slightly more compact in depth than the Samsung one. My friends did go with Samsung and they had reliability issues, but after two years, this one has been good so far. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And I just want to make like a casual walk around and show you some of the tech that I use on an everyday basis. I think now is a perfect time to kind of improve your home tech setup and just add some little things that you can use for many years to come because I'm personally someone who just doesn't change things very often. Once I have a setup and I'm happy with it, it just stays that way, even if there are possibly some improvements that should be made. This coffee is getting cold, I completely forgot about it, but make sure you drop a like in this video if you enjoyed, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below if you have any questions and I'll try to answer them and I'll see you all in my next video.